Is NVIDIA a good investment? I don't know, but we're going to run it through our checklist to find out. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. We have gotten several requests from people to take a closer look at NVIDIA. So that's what we're going to do roughly for the next hour. We This is a company that we know a little bit about, but we don't know a lot about it. So you're going to see us dig through SEC filings, look at investor presentations, look at any information that we can get to help us determine if this company is worth investing in. Brian. What do you know about NVIDIA as of right now? Right. So this is a little bit different because it's not totally a stock from scratch. NVIDIA is a stock that I know that they are a chip maker and I know that the applications for their chips can kind of, they run the gamut from gaming to cryptocurrencies to I, I'm pretty sure data centers. I am by no means a chip specialist. In fact, I tend to shy away from chip makers because I have a tough time seeing what the moat is, but I'm willing to learn and be proven wrong about that too. In this one, I'm sure that our chat is going to help us like they usually do, because typically our viewers know more about these companies than we do. And like you, I tend to shy away from chip makers myself because I also have a hard time assessing the competitive dynamics. And I'm also a big fan of recurring revenue, and I don't see chip makers really having recurring revenue. But I could be wrong about that. So this will be an interesting thing to watch. Let's find out. All right. And with that, uh, we want to thank StockCar.io for sponsoring uh, this video. Uh, we were using them as a portfolio tracking tool, and we're going to be using them to do some research on, 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 this, uh, on this stock from scratch. So thank you to StockCard. But Brian, let's, uh, let's get going. All right. So um, we, have our, uh, we have our checklists open. So I'm going to start here with NVIDIA. I know that this is a monstrously big company, uh, $496 billion. Uh, we're going to be filling out the Feraldi quality score as well as the anti-fragile score. I will zoom in a little bit so that that makes it easier. And we're going to be looking for these questions uh, right up front. Does the company have recurring revenue? I'm going to guess no, but I'm willing to be proven wrong yeah. on that one. Uh, is it profitable? We will look into that. Uh, is it free cash flow positive? We will look into that. As it beat in the S and P 500, we will look into that. So let's start out at stockcard.io and type in Nvidia. Okay. So we're going to look at some key information uh, here. So let's just read about Nvidia. Uh, Nvidia is a leading designer of graphic processing units that enhance the experience on computing platforms. The firm's chips are used in a variety of end markets: high-end PCs for gaming, data centers automotive infotainment systems. In recent years, the firm has broadened its focus from traditional PC graphics, such as gaming, to more complex and favorable, including artificial intelligence, autonomous driving. Uh, yeah, so my understanding is this company has become the Intel of the, the 2010s. Yeah, I agree. The way that I look at it. Like Intel dominated the 1980s and the 1990s uh, because they were a CPU company. Uh, NVIDIA is one of the leaders, if not the leader, in graphics processing units, which have become far more, uh, far more useful than anybody would have ever thought. So this company is currently a $490 billion company, just absolutely uh, massive. All right, so let's just check out a couple things here. Uh, sales growth for the company, um, very strong. Over the last three years, 20% growth rate, uh, current fiscal year, is revenue growth estimate is another 50%. That's pretty okay. good when you're a $500 billion company. Yes. Uh, profitability. So it is profitable on a earnings per share basis. That number has been growing. And the company's profit margin is 64%, which is higher than the average. Okay. Returns on capital. Return on invested capital, 24%. That is really high. Return on assets, 19%. Uh, returns on equity, 34%. Really good there. Uh, the company's returns long-term, I don't care about any of these short-term ones, but three-year, it's beaten the market. Five-year, it's beaten the market. And 10-year, it has smashed the market. So let's say so, a 16-bagger over the last five years? Yeah, 16-bagger. And if you look at the long-term, so this thing came public at a split-adjusted 40 cents a share. <laughs> Currently just shy of $200. So if you've been an investor in this thing, you've done good. All right, let's click over to the company's investor relations website. Okay, NVIDIA's invention. I guess they invented graphics processing units. I did know that too. They they pioneered it. 
Okay. I knew that they were a pioneer. I didn't know that they were inventors of it. Sparked growth in the PC gaming market, redefined modern computing graphics, and revolutionized parallel computing. More recently, GPU deep learning ignited modern AI, the next era of computing, with GPU acting as the brain of the computers, robots, and self-driving cars that can perceive and understand the world. Okay. It makes sense that something focused specifically on graphics is is incredibly applicable with these newer technologies. It makes total sense, right? We are using graphics for everything nowadays, uh, computing computing wise. Okay. Uh, we are, we specialize in products for the large growing markets of gaming, professional visualization, data centers, and automotive. No, nothing on there about Bitcoin. Yeah, that's what I was just <laughs> going to ask you. Cause I, I heard about NVIDIA and just in reading articles when we would talk about cryptocurrencies, but it seems like, it seems like the company is like, well, if you want to use it for that, great, but we're not going to focus too much on it. Yep. As always, I'm hoping that our chat can help us with this. And by the way, chat, there is something on YouTube called Super Chat, which we have enabled. We've never seen that happen before. But if you know anything about Super Chat and you want to use it, it's available. Uh, all right. So quarterly results. So let's pull up the most recent quarterly results. Uh, we'll look pull up the most recent presentation. Uh, here's a featured presentation. That's I think that's the one we just Probably opened. The same one. Yeah. Yep. Let's go to events and presentations. There's usually some uh, longer stuff uh, in here. Um, there there's an investor day, April 12th. So that's probably pretty detailed. That's, yeah, that's not too, um, too far ago. Let's go to financial info, financial reports, uh, the annual reports and proxies. So 2021, we will open that up. That's the annual report and the proxy statement. Okay. And so we got the quarterly reports and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. Are you cool with starting with a presentation? Let's do it. I love, yeah. I love starting with that because yes. they usually make it a gist. for someone just coming into it. Uh, GTC spring 2021. Good till close. I don't know what GTC means. Okay. Uh, Jensen Huang. I've heard, I've heard a lot about this guy. Uh, I do know he's a founder. So that's going to do great things for both of our uh, checklists. Um, I know that he is a multi-billionaire, I believe. I know that he is a icon in Silicon uh, Silicon Valley. Okay, for the Da Vinci's of our time, scientists at GTC. What's GTC? I don't know. Mm. I thought this was the annual. Wasn't this the investor presentation? Okay. Talks at GTC, so AI, 5G, Internet of Things, Edge Computing, Quantum Computing, Speech, NLU, Recommenders, Self-Driving Cars, Cybersecurity, Digital Twins, and Robotics, and who are the leaders? Okay, all those companies. New NVIDIA Technologies, Omniverse, Isaac Sim. Megatron, <laughs> that's a fun name. Uh, drug Discovery, Quantum Computing, Okay, Jarvis and Merlin, Hyperdrive, okay. Forces shaping industry, accelerated computing is the path forward. AI is software that writes software. Data center is the new unit of computing. I agree with you there. AI on 5G kickstarts the fourth industrial revolution and autonomous systems in the real and virtual worlds. It looks like we lost Brian. He is having problems with electricity in his part of the world. So I hope we get him back. Data center scale computing. NVIDIA Grace GPUs, NVIDIA Data Center Roadmap. Uh, GPUs, okay. These are the next generation's ones that they have planned for 2022, 2024 and beyond. CPUs? So I guess they're going to be in CPUs too. Is that a new market they're going to enter? Okay. NVIDIA plus ARM. ARM Holdings, I'm pretty sure that's called. That's a semiconductor uh, designer, if, me if memory serves. Okay. I guess they're buying ARM. Creates premier computing company for the age of AI, combining NVIDIA's leading AI computing platform with ARM's CPU 
and licensing expertise. Okay, that would be this thing. That would be this thing. Brian's back. Uh, back. Uh, so Brian, they're buying ARM computing, and they're going to be entering the CPU market by 2023. And is that did, did they say if that had been approved yet? I don't know. Okay. That, that would be in the latest news or the latest uh, earnings yeah. call or something like that. I know that, uh, I think that was a big acquisition. Huge. Waves of artificial intelligence. Computing, and that's the DGX. Cloud, HGX. 5G is the EGX, and robotics is the AGX. I wish that meant Acronym like soup. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All these things were named by engineers. <laughs> Announcing NVIDIA AI Enterprise Platform. Hmm. So, okay. Is a GPU cloud registry that uses all those words to do <laughs> this? Would, would, to do these other words. Would, do the other words. <laughs> Uh, can somebody smart explain to me what this means? <laughs> uh, it's an AI enterprise platform. Okay. So I assume that they're making the hardware that's going to power all these things in, in these different end applications. All right. Yep. So that's going to be a limitation of researching this stock. We're going to get all kinds of terms thrown at us that we might have no idea what they mean. NVIDIA drives software defined platform for autonomous driving. So let's talk about autonomous driving for a second. All right. I know that this is a massive market opportunity. I also know as a fan and follower of Tesla that Tesla ditched Nvidia in favor of designing their own chip. And that and that right there is why I am so careful about chip makers. Yeah. I I know that it was a massive investment for Tesla to do so. I think it was like $100 million or more for them to build their own custom chip. The thing I remember Elon saying is by designing our own custom chip that's just for us, we get way more performance, even though their chip wasn't as good technically because it was custom built for their products. Right. Um, it, it, it really ex it made their performance much higher. We've also seen um, Apple design its own chips. Right. Uh, for, for, for example, I think that they ditched Intel, not necessarily uh, NVIDIA, but that would be curious to see if there's customer concentration risk on a company this massive. Right. And, and the thing, to, the question to ask yourself is, could you see Google doing that? Do they already do it? Again, I'm not a chip expert. So, but these are the types of questions I'd like to ask myself when it's an area that I'm less familiar with. Yeah. Um, but is autonomous driving... If you were not Tesla, if you were every other car maker or every other company that's focused on autonomous driving, NVIDIA is probably a major key supplier for you. Right. Uh, because digesting the information, taking it in, I can totally, I totally believe takes enormous amount of compute power and it's all graphically based and you, you're going to need a company like NVIDIA to help you do it. Exactly. So they have this roadmap for autonomous driving that's going to get way faster. Way more, way more tops. So look at all those tops, Brian, that are going up to the right. I wish I knew what tops were. <laughs> uh, NVIDIA end-to-end -end, uh, AV platform. So they can help with data collecting, mapping, training, simulation, driving, and modeling. So their chips, are these different chips that they have to sell? Or are they on the same chip? I don't know. NVIDIA drives software-defined car platform. Announcing Hyperion 8, software-defined car platform, okay? A new technology, a new breed of companies. Heck, Neo, Lee oh, Auto, all them, the world's biggest brands, 10 trillion miles a year, Cruise. Essentially, everybody but Tesla is using us, if yep. I had to, as I had to sum summarize this. Although I don't see Ford, for example, but um, okay. Chips, chips, uh, chips in automotive is a big, it's a big industry. GTC. We had someone say that the GTC was the conference. Okay. So why would they call it the investor day? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe they're just letting you know what's coming up at their conference. Yeah. Good. I'm going to call it the good till close spring conference. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Data center is the new unit of computing. Bluefield, keep doing the edge. Jeff Fisher, <laughs> the SVP of gaming. He changed, he changed industries. Gaming, gaming is gaming and esports is wow. huge, huge, huge. Um, and growing while that gray one is shrinking. Disc Discord is growing. YouTube, yes. So, uh, gaming is a growing industry. F I fully buy that. <laughs> No, no argument from me there. So it was a record year. Average selling price was up 11% each year. Wow. Let's, let's talk about what that means for beginning investors, especially. ASP is average selling price. So how many dollars do you get per chip that they sell? And that figure is going up 11% per year. In addition to the number of units being up 10% per year. The average selling price going up 11% per year is like anti everything I know about computing hardware. Exactly. I was going to say, this is the opposite of, of what I worry about when I think about chip makers, because in, in essence, chips are commodity unless your chip is so much better than everybody else's. And or unless the computing system is built around the architecture of your chip. Right. So switching costs. Yes. So either it just has to be the best or it's got switching costs. Mm -hmm. and, and and I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA has both of those things. Yeah. RTX resets the install base. The new standard in Battle Royale. Okay, so we just... Gaming install base. All right, so we just launched this new thing, RTX, and everybody's going to have to upgrade to it. That's how I'm reading that. Amphere is the best launch ever. It's growing way faster. It's taking share. Gamers are paying for it. Okay. GeForce, the fastest growing gaming platform. Amphere laptop. 70 models that have our chip built in. Okay. That's thinner. 2x smaller. Uh, okay. Does this mean they're growing faster than PlayStation? Or they're selling more than there are PlayStations? Yeah. Uh, gaming is moving to PCs. Um, PC gaming is more than playing, creating, designing. 45 million creators, 30 million live streamers. Um, hey, that's us. That's us. And Although we're, I, not, we're not live streaming our games. Yes. But we are live streaming, so we yes. need graphics. Uh, 33. This is a play on uh, virtual reality. So virtual reality is expected to 6x, okay? Billions more gamers, GeForce Now. Gaming is the 5G killer app. One third of the world covered by 2025. Okay. I could see 5G enabling all kinds of new games. And I could see okay. Chromebooks being the main way that people access them. I buy Billion that. More gamers. Gaming, we have a long runway for growth. Okay. Uh, a record-breaking so year. If I if I didn't if I'm not mistaken or or the part that I got kicked out with, they covered cars and gaming. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, revenue is up. So gross, much. Grow much. Gross margin was up. Operating leverage got kicked in. See, this is why we focus on operating leverage. So. Operating income grew 80%, even though revenue only grew 50%. That's the power of operating leverage. Earnings per share grew 73%. Uh, gaming, 18% oh, growth this. rate. Yeah, data this centers. This is great. 69% uh, growth rate. Um, what does that say? Mellanox. That must that be an acquisition. An acquisition. Uh, that's been my assume. Auto down 2%, but... That is that because of auto shortages? Like I know that like I know there's a chip shortage. I know that automakers are having trouble getting chips. It and could that's be a, that's a thing. What could it also be though? So this is fiscal 2021, right? So that a huge chunk of that was during COVID. What what I'm wondering is is instead of it being necessarily because of a chip shortage, I would imagine there had to be shutdowns mm -hmm. worldwide for a while because people couldn't go into the factory. And so because of that, they're selling less chips at that part of the production cycle. So they actually had 
negative growth in visualization and auto, but data and gaming, data in particular, more than made up for it. But okay, so just for a sense of scale, gaming yeah. is half of revenue, 40% of revenue. Data centers is 40% of revenue. So auto is really tiny, actually. It's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. It's one. It's less than one tenth gaming. Um, currently, and right. visualization is is up is a little bit okay. So it's still it's still very much a game gaming and data center, yes, growth story. But the future is auto and visualization, and um, slash crypto. But crypto is not on here. Um, okay. Partner ecosystem: Cisco, Dell, Hewitt Packard, and Livono. Uh, business model, software license per CPU socket and annual maintenance or subscription. Ooh. That sounds like recurring revenue. I wonder, I wonder how much of their overall revenue comes via subscription. Well, they might, they might break that out for us. Delivering NVIDIA AI and accelerated computing to the world's largest industries. So data prep training, stimulation, orchestration. Yeah. So NVIDIA AI Enterprise has these partners and this is a differentiated business model. This is not yeah, selling chips. It's 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 selling access it's a to a software their license and maintenance or subscription. Either way, recurring. Over eight billion in design wins. Faraday Futures, Canoe, Cruise, Navistar, Volvo. Landmark partnership is with Mercedes-Benz. Shared revenue for Autopilot and AI cockpit software per car. Also recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. 100 million cars a year sold globally. So they've built platforms. They've done, yeah. they, they're more than just chips. Okay. Ooh, revenue contribution. Yeah, so, so that, as we just to said. To be clear, revenue contribution really, to me, means... Uh, Oh, revenue contribution. So this is not profit contribution. Okay, never mind. Yes, but gross profit. Yeah. Uh, gaming bubble represents size. So visualization is high margin. So are data centers is very high margin. Gaming auto is low margin, lower margin right now. Uh, but that probably is just because of the scale. The power of one architecture, leveraging our platform to reach record levels of profitability. And that makes sense. Course, when you run a a forty percent operating margin. When you run a platform, you have much higher margins. Mm -hmm. You just have to flip a switch. You don't have to make a chip. You literally push a button. Yeah. So curious thing here is um, a 40% operating margin is awesome. The downside is, is Where there is more gains? <laughs> is there more yeah. gains ahead? Um, if the answer is no, if they're at peak margin right now, that means that all future profit growth comes from revenue growth, not from operational gains. Um, just, just an interesting thing to note. Cash flow huge, capex. I mean, so pretty look, small. We a can billion, look at that. A See billion that dollars in capex. Yeah, it's about four point seven billion in free cash flow. Last year. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait, we don't know about. Oh trailing, yes, you're, you're correct. You're correct. Four point seven billion in, in fiscal year twenty twenty one free cash flow. Game changing acquisitions, Mellanox and Arm. Disciplined capital returns returned five billion to shareholders. Conservative financial policy. Okay, so twenty twenty revenue of five point three billion includes CMP revenue. What's CMP? I don't know. I'm just supposed to Wait, magically there it is. know. The crypto mining processor. Ah! There it is. CMP stands for crypto mining processors, including the original equipment manufacturer marketing platform. How many acronyms do you think are in this presentation? Oh my Would you goodness. put it at over a hundred? Over. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Crypto mining processors right. of 150 million for the full year. That's, That's nothing. In, nothing. Pennies. That's nothing compared to the, the company's overall. Okay. Committed to ESG. America's most just companies, best companies to work for. Big glass door. Yeah. Where, where do you see glass door? Uh, oh. Third one. Best place to work, employee's choice. Uh, 65, uh, committed to green. Great. 
Okay. Okay. Net income, hugely positive. Diluted. Okay, we made it through. All right, we got the annual report. Let's start uh, digging in. Is that? Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a great picture. America's most important company, according to Forbes. Do they manufacture in the United States? I can't imagine the answer is yes, but I don't I know. Hmm. We're seeing a major chain in pe helping people PC graphics, and it shouldn't be a surprise that in Nvidia is leading the way. Gaming is the world's largest entertainment industry with more than 200 million gamers. NVIDIA GeForce is the largest platform. GeForce into powerful gaming machines powered by NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, our second-gen RTX design, GeForce RTX 30, and GPUs in in incredibly realistic ray-traced graphics. Uh, twice, the power twice the power efficiency. I love how they're saying, look at our graphics, and then they use Minecraft. I know. That's it. I, I was just like, my daughter plays a game like that. <laughs> the next frontier for real-time collaboration of 3D content creation, Twitter Tech News. Nice. NVIDIA Omniverse is an open platform creating a real-time photorealistic simulation. Is that like the metaverse? Yep. The virtual world brings together workflows design and engineering to provide physically accurate results in 3D. What? Yeah, I mean, if the metaverse takes off with companies like Roblox, for example, you need very high-end graphic cards to make that happen. Huh. Okay. Cars being produced, okay. So if the matrix ever happens, it'll be because Nvidia figured out a way to do it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we used to think of the CPU server as the basic unit, but the demands of today, we must optimize the entire data center from end to end. The CPU for general purpose computing, the GPU for accelerated computing, and the DPU, which processes and moves data around the data center. And so data let, let me just stop you real quick to say something there. When I read that, what I say is, is that you less and less you can take one part out and put another part in. All the parts have to play together which to me adds much more of a moat in terms of high switching costs than if you could just plug in a GPU, a DPU, a CPU from company A, company B, company C, you need them to all work together. That really does add more of a moat around the company's business. Yeah, fair, if that's true. Right. NVIDIA GD GDX SuperPod brings them together to create the world's worst, world's first turnkey AI infrastructure. So it's those three things together. Well, that's probably why they bought ARM. If ARM was so good at CPUs. Right. Because they seem to be doing good at GPUs and DPUs are data centers, which is a massive growth. They're, they're crushing it in data centers. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, compression, translation. Oh, and face alignment. Uh, NVIDIA Maxine is a cloud AI video streaming platform that can breathe new life into video calls that bring us to work, study, and personal. The latest platform, NVIDIA AI, is joining NVIDIA Jarvis for conversational AI and NVIDIA Merlin. Predict user preferences like shopper, a, a product a shopper would buy, movies to watch, or news or interest. Okay. Yeah, this is much more than just a chip maker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mercedes-Benz is a partner. Make cars more like phones. Yeah. C cars are rapidly becoming phones. So, yeah, so you do a whole bunch with this. Yeah, I can see, I could see it being very painful for any automaker to switch away. But again, automakers right now are not immaterial, but close. Hmm. All right. Today we've seen that. Okay. Stakeholders. Okay. We've seen some of the financial results. We're growing. Uh, we're doing very well. Four waves of AI. AI software that writes software. Oh, that's Whoa. just scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, well, we're here. So there we go. Let's security do it. ownership of management. Okay. Wow. Jen Swen Huang owns 
2 that's, million shares or th that's a lot. Three. Okay. Three and a half percent of this business. $15 billion. Yeah. I'm but just surprised. on a percentage basis, Brian. Right. Because that's what I use. It's not what you use, but it's what I use. And there, I look for above eight to give them a point. And if it's between four and eight as a group, it's zero. If it's below four, they lose a point. And 4.23 is what it looks like it is. I mean, I get it. I get yeah. it, right? It's $500 billion company. I get it. But Amazon's a almost two, two trillion. Two trillion. trillion yeah. And Bezos you know, before, owns. Before yeah. the divorce, Bezos owned like 15% of the company. Yeah. Okay. So again, we have the CEO. He's been there since the beginning. These are our peers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get to the, let's get past this. T to me, there's skin in the game. Yes, I mean, <laughs> there is. Okay, so let's go to the business. Okay. Our company pioneered accelerated computing. Since our original focus on PC graphics, we've expanded uh, into computing for scientists, artificial intelligence, data scientists, autonomous vehicles, robotics, augmented and virtual reality. Initially used to simulate human imagination. Today it's used to do tons more stuff. I buy all that. NVIDIA has a platform strategy. That's important. Bringing together hardware, software, algorithms, libraries, systems, and services to create unique value for the markets we serve. While the requirements of these end markets are diverse, we address them with a uniform underlying architecture, leveraging our GPUs and, and software stacks. There it is. The programmable nature of our architecture allows us to support seven multi-billion dollar end markets with the same underlying technology by using a variety of software stacks developed either internally or by third-party developers and partners. When, in, in case there's a, someone starting out or maybe like me, when you say software stacks, does that just mean a group of software products? That run on top of a hardware Right. products yeah i interpret that the same way it's kind of like you know the iphone I, I, ios is to the iphone like a software stack is to their chip it's the software that kind of takes advantage of the hardware there you go yeah and by the way again while tesla went away from this tesla is huge into dividing their own software so yep. i can imagine them saying we can do that we, we would rather have that software use our own hardware whereas it might be more challenging for company for other companies to do the same Okay, we have invested $24 billion in research and development since our inception. Great. Uh, with our introduction of the CUDA programming model in 2006, we opened up the parallel processing capabilities of the GPU for general purpose computing, significantly accelerates the most demanding high performance computing, HPC, applications such as aerospace, bioscience, mechanical and fluids and energy exploration. Our GPUs power many of the fastest supercomputers in the world. While CPUs no longer deliver advances on the pace of Moore's law, we deliver GPU performance on a pace ahead of Moore's law. One of our commenters said the same thing. Huh. Cool. Gamers choose NVIDIA's GPUs to enjoy immersive cinematic worlds. World's fastest growing spectator sport, eSports, which is attracting hundreds of millions. Researchers use it. NVIDIA powers 70%, 80% of the top supercomputers. The world's leading cloud service providers use GPU to for search, social networking, online shopping, live video, tons of stuff. Yeah, anybody that uses a data center is mm -hmm. using NVIDIA. A growing number use them for automation. The transport industry is using our platforms for AV. Is that autonomous vehicles? Yeah. For drug drug discovery and for fraud detection. Okay. Okay. In September, we entered into a purpose agreement with Arm Limited for f forty billion. Um. Okay. Yeah, there's the details. Okay, we report in two segments. Graphic graphic segment, GPUs, PCs, streaming, compute and networks as data center. Okay, so, for, so. for today, it's games, 
and data centers. Yes, the two segments that they report in. Our markets are gaming, huge, professional vis visualization. Um, that seems to me all those other things they mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Data centers. Uh, data centers, yep, huge market. Automotive. Okay, advancing the accelerated compute, extended our platform leadership in AI. There are 2.2 million developers using CUDA and other tools. We evangelize AI through partnerships with hundreds of universities and more than 7,000 startups. Okay, I like the I like the focus on universities. Mm -hmm. Extended our technology, advancing autonomous vehicles. We believe our intellectual property is a valuable asset that can be accessed by our consumers. Sales and marketing. We sell through original equipment manufacturers, device manufacturers, system builders, atom manufacturers, retailers, internet. Anywhere you can buy computer stuff, you can buy NVIDIA. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can, I can imagine this being, this being a seasonal business, like ele consumer yeah. electronics are very heavily weighed towards Q4 manufacturing. We do not directly manufacture. Oh, so they use Taiwan maybe, or. Yep. That, that must be it. Yep. It's in the next. We utilize industry leading suppliers such as Taiwan semiconductor. Don't they have like some ungodly amount of market share? Yeah. I, it's yeah. huge. Samsung and independent subcrack some some subtractors uh flex we purchase from all these other people micron samsung okay we typically receive products from the subcontractors competition we compete against amd intel xilinx hpc alphabet amazon who would Xilinx was just acquired? I can't Were they? Remember. I, uh, I thought so. Uh -huh. uh, or companies with internal teams designing products such as Tesla. Yeah. And suppliers of, so they compete with all those. Okay. Recruitment. Uh, okay. Develop and retention, safety and COVID. All right. Let's do a quick search while we're here for concentration. Very concentration of revenue, revenue from sales to customers outside the U.S. were 81% of revenue. Not surprising. 81% of revenue? But think about it. Their customers are the manufacturers in China, Vietnam. It's not that 81% of NVIDIA's chips end up outside the U.S., although maybe, but they're shipping these to the people that put together Let's just say an iPhone. I, even okay. If they don't. So they're uh, shipping it to Foxconn, let's say. Is that where the revenue recognition happens? Maybe. Um, okay. So no customer was 10% of revenue or more, hey. uh, but, but Dell was the prior year. All right. So Dell is a major, major customer. And here's margins for last year. So R&D. So just on a percentage basis, SG&A selling, that's uh one fifth that number so they are very uh efficient with sgna when it comes to yep. generating sales their biggest expense is r d so i like that wow wait can you go up just one one real quick yep uh, a little bit more there uh man compute networking double doubled <sighs> yeah all right uh while we're here let's do um Glass door NVIDIA. Okay. Woo. That looks pretty favorable. Brian, I know we've said this a couple times, but I don't think off of 3,000 reviews I've ever seen scores that high. Is that, does that beat Zoom? It might. Whatever Zoom is. It beats it Zoom. Is. Wow. Wow is correct. Wow is correct. Um, okay. Is there anything else we made to check? Um, we, the balance sheet? Yes. Uh, so is this their most recent one? Uh, so revenue is up 
84. 84%. Gaming was up 106%. Data so sets was up 79%. It switched. Yeah, gaming grew even faster. We had a fantastic quarter. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Our data center continues to expand. Mellanox has exceeded our expectations. Oh, that's probably part of why. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. We're making headway with our acquisition of ARM. So as of May 26th, it hasn't happened yet. We've had oh, some they, comments they, say that the EU is 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 okay a, 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 an obstacle. Uh, they did a cash dividend, so they pay a dividend. Uh, their board of directors had a four for one stock split. Okay, a gross margin is up. Operating expenses only grew one percent. That's insane. <laughs> That's leverage. That is operating leverage. So what was their net income? Uh, 1.9 billion on, is this the right one? Yeah. That's a 40 wow. something. So they're between 35 no. and 40. 1.9 divided by five. Yeah. Double that. Uh, 40's uh, net margin after all yeah. expenses are Not taken Not operating. Out. Yes. Um, okay, we did all this stuff. Everything's going great. Automotive was down 1%. Uh huh. Okay. Let's go to the balance sheet though. Uh, 12 billion in cash. Jesus. Uh, okay. Goodwill was 4 billion, but that's about to skyrocket if, um, yeah. if their acquisition goes through. Debt is 5 billion long term. So net cash position of about 7 billion. And yeah. I'm guessing their free cash flow. Yeah, their, their cash it, position is bigger than all of their liabilities combined. Can you look at the next statement, the cash flows, yeah. just to see how much it's changed? 1.9 billion in free, in, in, uh, excuse me. Operating. So 1.9 billion in operating, and then property, plant, and equipment. So 1.5 billion in, in free cash flow last quarter. So it's quarter. increased over the first quarter or Hugely. six months? Uh, year, three months. So it's over 5 billion. That's yeah. that's enough for me to know. Stock based compensation is four hundred million. So where's the income statement? Do they have earnings per share? Okay, uh, the share count twenty twenty. So the share count is going up about uh, what's that one and a half percent? Yeah. Okay. I wonder if they're buying back stock. Uh, purchase of dividend. They're paying dividends. Payments related to. Issuance of debt. Well, I looked at that. Okay, margins are heading in the right. They had they had a phenomenal phenomenal quarter. Is is the bottom line there? Okay. So you know, one thing we haven't found real quick: a mission statement. <laughs> let's go back to. Yeah, let's uh, see if they put it on their page. If you click on the overview, that. Oh yes. Be. Um. They don't include nope. Um, Nvidia mission statement. First answer is not your <laughs> um, to provide the latest Nvidia. Uh, no, 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 that's not that can't be right. What about that one work culture? Uh, um, here the, the top one. No, I I thought I saw it. Is it maybe uh, maybe in there in there something about superhuman? Uh, well, there's something about bringing superhuman something to the world's biggest problems. Who we are. Nope. If it's this there, hard to there, find, what? to bringing superhuman capabilities to some of the world's toughest problems, I feel like I've read that before. But the fact that it's hard to what find does that one. mean? Bringing superhuman capability. Um, you, are you going to give them credit for that for their mission statement? I don't know. I'm glad you go first. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, as of right now, I'm assuming they don't have one. And just real quick, 
So that's something that I've noticed about founder led companies. So, it, and it's, it's a Jekyll and Hyde type thing. There are two sides to the coin. And by that, what I mean is some of the best companies don't have a mission statement that are founder led because that mission statement hasn't been made explicit by the founder and it lives inside her or his brain. And that's enough. That's enough while the founder is there. Reed Hastings doesn't have a mission statement that I can tell at Netflix. Peter Gassner at Viva just wrote the mission statement for Viva. Um, and, and I even went back and forth with their PR people about it because they thought they had one. And I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> and, and so it is not a problem at this point. But when Jensen Huang isn't there anymore and they need to find a direction when they meet in their boardroom, then it's going to matter. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check this to change recurring revenue to sort of. That's fair. Uh, are they profitable? Yep. Free cash flow positive? Yes. And have they beaten the S&P 500? Yes. Okay. Let's go to the quality score. Okay. It is NVIDIA. Today's date is August 12th, 2021. Balance sheet, five out of five. Gross margin. Uh, it's below 80%, but it's rising. I'll give you two there. Returns on capital, three out of three. Uh, first first company to get that on this uh, this series. Free cash flow, growing and positive. EPS, growing and positive. Okay. Does this company have a network effect or a product ecosystem? They've you can argue. Ecosystem. You could argue they have an ecosystem, um, be, especially if they launch this chip that brings together GPUs, DPUs, and CPUs. CPUs. Mm -hmm. um, how strong is that? I don't know. Uh, I'll give them five points for that out of fifteen. Do they have switching costs? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that if you are a customer that has built your PC data center, whatever, around NVIDIA's chips, that you're going to have a switching cost. Uh, so I'll give them five points for that. Um, do they have a durable scale advantage? Can they produce these things at a lower cost than competitors? That no, I, they don't produce it. They don't produce it. Yeah, all that advantage goes to Taiwan Semi. Right. Um, but I'm definitely going to give them five points for brand, for Which, patents. for. But listen, that's huge. How many computer chip makers have brand value? Like right. none. In Intel. I mean, but do they anymore? Like, I don't even know if that, like 10, 20 years ago, yeah, I'd argue that. But like today, like, I'd be more impressed to be like, yeah, my computer's got an NVIDIA chip. So my point is the max you can get for Moat is 20, and I'm giving them 20. There you go. So whatever order you want to be, that's fine. I'm telling you that I broke it up into three, but I'm giving them full credit. Mm -hmm. Optionality. Does the company have the ability to launch new products or new services that open up new revenue opportunities? And are they within the industry or are they open up in new industries? So the company is focused on graphics processing units, has been for a long time. They're recently getting into data center, DPUs, as well as CPUs. Those are all contained within the semiconductor industry. So I will give them five points out of seven for that. What about what about their software? Are they selling the software? Yeah, They're they selling, are, right? Yeah, software licenses. Now, You're right. they, it was hard to tell how much of the business that is, but with optionality, it doesn't even matter how much it is. It's the fact that they're doing it. Okay, you can, I'll give them a six out of seven. There you, you go. You talked me into it. Okay. Is the company's organic growth run weight high? Can they grow above 15% for the foreseeable future? Yes. Yes. Are they the top dog and first mover? Yes. Uh, are they? Do they have operating leverage ahead of them? They're already at 40%-ish profit margins. Do you? Do we think that that number is going to go to 45, 50, 55, 60%? Their gross margin is 65% or 63. There isn't a lot of room there. No, I don't think I don't think they have especially much operating leverage ahead. Because if they if they cut down on their their R and D, they might get a short term bump from that, but they'll eventually start losing it on gross well, margins because their products won't be as good. If they continue to grow their revenue, that right. that should, that might lead to it. So I'll give them, I will give them I'll give them one point for that. Okay, customer acquisition cost, gross profit. It, uh, spending on sales and marketing and administrative was only 11% of revenue. Gross margin was 63%. That is very efficient. Uh, I will give them four out of five there. 
Customer dependence. Uh, let's let's look at um, the long term. India, and we'll go with revenue. What happened to this company's revenue? That's lumpy. Yeah, that is lumpy. That's lumpy. When when bad times happen, does this company's revenue stay the same or go up? It goes down. Yeah. This is okay. This is this is cyclical uh, revenue. Uh, so I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it two. Uh, I'll give it three. Three out of five. The one thing that helps is that they've got so many different industries, and as long as they're going through their cycles at a different pace, it's not that big of a deal. Correct. But then why did revenue decline? Because they were in less, in fewer of those industries back then. Is, uh, but this was even recent, Brian. This, this was 2020. Yeah, that's true. Decline. Is that, boy, yeah, I don't know. Is that that's when, what I, that's is that their when Bitcoin revenue. dropped? That, that is not recession proof revenue. I agree. I agree. Um, if you want to see recession proof revenue, uh, let's look at, um, let's do a comparison. Netflix. Yeah. That looks like recession proof revenue to me. You can, it, and it actually goes up during the yeah. recession. Um, so, is this company's revenue recurring? There is a need to repurchase purpose these chips every, I don't know, four years. And they do have a subscription plan. They are having a subscription plan. That is not, that is the future. And that is right. a tiny portion of revenue because right now the, the revenue is from hardware. So, I'm going to give them a two out of five on recurring revenue. Does the company have the ability to raise prices and not lose customers? They were raising prices 11% on their graphics processing units for gamers. Average That's selling crazy. price was going up and margins uh, were going up. I'll give them a four on that. Okay. Which uh, is so impressive for a chip maker. Very impressive. Uh, so much about this company is impressive. Soul in the game. Uh, Jensen Wan is assuming I pronounced that correctly, he is the founder, inside ownership. Um, he has $15 billion on the line, but on a percentage basis, it's low. In other words, if this company came to a vote for a proxy, he wouldn't be able to influence it. But if this stock goes down, does he get hurt? Yes, I'm going to give him a two out of three. Glassdoor ratings, off the chart good. Mm -hmm. Off the chart good. Mission statement, zero. <laughs> <laughs> I award you zero points for mission statement. Uh, if somebody can find it and point it out to us, uh, that would be great. Uh, five year versus the S&P 500, very strong. Are they buying back stock? Yes, actually, let's check. Um, shares, oops, not this one. Ha, ha, are they buying back shares? Outstanding. I heard them talk about uh, 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 their dividend, but not buying back shares. Well, that's going down. So over the last five years, it's down 3%. So they must be doing some. Oh, they probably stopped for the acquisitions. Oh, uh, that makes sense. So right now they're not. Um, they, they are not repaying debt, uh, but they are buying a dividend. They're clearly using capital to reward shareholders. They're using it with the dividend and before they were paying it. I'll give them two out of three for that. Okay, let's check. How is the company done versus Wall Street's estimates? Uh, beat, 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 beat. Four for four. And that is a pre-gauntlet score of 83. That's an That's upper great. echelon. That is very good. All right. Accounting irregularities, no. Customer concentration, they just got this below 10%. So no. Industry disrupting. Can something come along and disrupt the industry? Oh, that's no. like that's like the big fear for me. Outside force. Do they need commodity prices, interest rates, stock prices, or a strong economy? They well, they're not recession proof. Of, they're not recession proof. So they kind of need a strong economy, but I don't think it's enough to knock them points for. Um Big market loser. Have they lost badly to the market? Nope. Do they have a binary event ahead? Nope. I mean, the whether the arm deal goes through or not is, is a binary event, but that wouldn't be thesis changing. Um, is the dilution very high? Nope. It was 1%. Are they growing by acquisition exclusively, partially, or none? I well, mean, the Mellanox it's added kind a of. Ton for it data did. Center. I'll, I'll, I'll knock them two points for that. Um, is our financials complicated? They're 
presentations are complicated. <laughs> <laughs> their technology is complicated. Is their antitrust concerns? Anybody calling for to be bro for Nvidia to be broken up? Not that I know of. Headquarter risk? Nope, it's in California. Currency risk. 82% of this company's revenue is derived yeah. outside the United States. So yes, there is currency, uh, it's currency risk minus two. Um, so that gives them a total score of 79, which is very, very good. Uh, this is very, an investable stock for me. Um, okay, let's do the anti-fragile framework. All right, mission statement. I, I'm going to give it minus one, and I'm just going to reiterate what I said before, which is that I believe that this is a mission-driven company. The problem is, is that whatever that mission means exists inside of Jensen Wong's brain, and it hasn't been formalized. And if something were to happen to him tomorrow, I would want to know what that North Star is. And they might know inside that boardroom what it is, but they haven't communicated that. But they're so terrible gonna... at communicating it. Yeah, exactly. All right. So for the moat, I'm going to give them a point and a half for switching costs. Okay. I'm going to give them a half point for the network effect. And then I'm going to give them the full point for brand value, bringing it to three. Okay. Uh, for optionality, I believe that I, I'm, I'm cheating. So we're going to add a half point at the end, but I'm going to give them two and a half points. So you can put down two or three. The reason being is they're, they've, they've got three different types of processing units that they're aiming for. They've got software that they're aiming for. And just, I mean, you go back 10 years and it's just gaming and then it's gaming and, uh, and then it's gaming and data centers. And then uh, it's gaming and data centers and automotive. And so it just, the fact that all that exists, it's more than two, but it's not three points for me. Gotcha. Super strong. Give them a full point here. No concentration risk. Glassdoor, awesome. Um, founder, there. Ownership, zero, because it was between four and 8%. If we add that half point, that brings us to seven and a half, which probably seems low for some people. But I, I, I want to reiterate what I always say with this. First of all, seven and a half makes it investable. So when we head on over to Stock Card, I get to put that one in my investable portfolio. Um, but NVIDIA is probably a poster child for, because I did run this through my framework maybe four or five years ago and it got pretty much the same score and this is a perfect example of sure it didn't get the anti-fragile level of 12 and above at the same time this is one of those that it, it can be an amazing investment and still not have that because it's easier for me to see what could go wrong so this is being this is an anti-fragile or this is going in the anti-fragile portfolio not in your anti-portfolio Right, exactly. Because anything seven and above we put in there, it's investable. For me, this is investable. NVIDIA, buy. Uh, $200 share, so five. Five. So that we are, we're pretending that we're investing in $1,000 increments, and the date is today. And uh, what is it? Score 7.5? Yep. Score? And if okay. anybody wants to follow, they can head on over to StockCard.io, and they can follow our portfolio. So and for me, this was a 79. So I'm going to put it in my uh, tracked portfolio. This is a buy, the same five shares today, uh, 79 on my checklist. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. This was yet another fascinating uh, company. And quick shout out to all of our channel members. Um, the reason that we chose NVIDIA today is because we did a vote on our channel page and NVIDIA got the number one vote. Uh, this vote was only available to our channel members, uh, which current which total 32 at the time. If you're interested in joining and getting some perks, click that join button and you'll be able to vote on the next one that we do just for channel members. Thank you so much for watching. This was a very fun company to research. I was blown away by the financials, by the uh, the founder and the Glassdoor ratings. Um, the This company is incredibly, incredibly strong and I could see it growing for a long time. I did too. I, I, I think it's, I, I totally understand investing in NVIDIA. If yeah. I wasn't standing by my framework just for the purposes of learning more, this would be very an interesting investment for me. Tons of potential growth ahead of this company. And I was most excited today. I started out assuming there was no recurring revenue. And I now I said, well, there's sort of, 
the yeah. of recurring revenue. And the company has new revenue opportunities that are being opened up that could continue to drive that. So, all right. Thank you so much to Stock Card IO for, for sponsoring this video. We will see you next week with not only a summary of what we talked about today, but also a uh, our next uh, uh, Stocks from Scratch deep dive. Brian, hope you get power back soon. See I hope week. so too. See you next week. <laughs>